Welcome to game number four between Beastie Cutie and Marine Lord spawning in over on the west side of the map in the color blue, playing as the Holy Roman Empire. We have got Beastie Cutie. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right. So, indeed, Beastie Cutie is spawning in on the left side in blue. We did have a bit of a difficulty out there on our end, but now it's resolved. So, Beastie Cutie with the blue HRE on the left side, on the right side, it is going to be Marine Lord with the English in red. And look at that beautiful optimization out there for Beastie Cutie right at the beginning. Having that plot inspire every single starting villager he has. Very heavy on the lumberjacking department. We could be seeing an early dock from him. And indeed, he just spent 150 wood on something. So there is going to be a dock coming in here from Beast QT. Well, there's a couple of other things that he could make. But yeah, I, I would be suspicious if it was anything other than a dock at this point. And it looks like Marine Lord going to be doing the same thing. And that's kind of interesting to see. Uh, one of the, the, the openings that we did typically see English players do was just go for this very fast uh, feudal age play and then just look to get longbows out to try and deny the early fishing uh, from their opponents. But it's not going to be the case today. Marine Lord looking to really invest heavily in the water. And it's kind of like a... Uh, it, it, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword when you think about it as the English. Because if you're playing as the English, obviously you want to be going off those farms. But if you've got villagers that are out on the water, your fishing boats, and they're gathering up the food for you, we don't really need to get onto those farms. And as a result, it means that there's like there, there's less synergy for the English and going into this early water on a map like this. Indeed, that's an interesting aspect to take a look at. Look at the amount of sheep that Marine Lord has managed to get. Looks like after missing out on the sheep on the high view game, now he's pretty successful finding those for himself. Obviously, this is the map with the most sheep available, and they usually spawn on these outer rims alongside those cliffs. So this is what you're targeting primarily with your scouts. You're moving out towards those regions first, because you're going to be most likely rewarded with a quite lot of sheep. And while you might be thinking about fishing as your primary source of food, Sheep is still a great backup, and look at that, the block coming in here from Marine Lord <laughs> to prevent Beastie from cross-walling this one, and now the scout is in here, and there's an English villager. Keep in mind, the English villager does shoot with a bow, does have a decent damage output, and there's a realistic chance of this villager being picked off over here even. That's a dead villager. That is indeed a dead villager, and I've never seen a boat block a wall, but I tell you what, there's a first for everything, and that is going to be some very cute boat micro coming out from Marine Lord. And with that, that crossing remains open, which is always nice for the English, because obviously the English, they will have the chance to push you with longbows at any moment in this one, right? For Beastie playing the HRE, he wants to wall those crossings, he wants to focus on the water, and then probably play towards that fast castle style approach, try to get the three relics that he has on his side of the river, guaranteed three relics for both players on this map so hr is a relatively safe pick relics wise and look at a second villager could get intercepted over here beastie really wants those walls but marine lord is just not giving him anything here yeah it looks like he's managed to full wall up in the center but the problem is there is one wall in the middle that's only got about 40 percent of its health completed now it would take about half a second before that villager taps that wall and completes it but the problem is it's going to take time and we now see a third villager making its way out to try and complete that wall beastie's definitely got a plan in mind and he knows that uh that his enemy <laughs> oh no 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 marine lord says look you can come out here for a third time mate it's not going to happen though just just go back Go back to your side and uh, and you can work it out yourself. Look at this. This is just very frustrating opening here for Beastie. He's trying his best to, to deal with this. And you can see the wall. <laughs> oh, no. Very clever moves by Marine Lord. You could see that he didn't just start building his closest part of the wall and then just wait. He started the foundations from three sections, making sure that it's not going to be possible for Beastie to block it with the scouts. And then... Once the scouts came in, once the villager came in, he started building the section that was targeted by Beastie. And with that, Marine Lord is going to crosswall this one, leaving that get up open. And that completely changes the game plan here for Beastie because he can't feel safe. The English, they will have the option to push him with longbows. And that means that you're going to have to adjust that. And this is something that Beastie may have tried to avoid. If he is successful walling himself up, he can think about a straight castle age here, go for a relics, maybe even fast imperial. Now that he's open, it's a completely different scenario. He's going to have to respect Marine Lord's ability to push him with longbows. 
Yeah, that's going to be something that's going to be on his mind. Ark and Chapel are going to be going down. We'll give this one a rating right now. It looks like it's going to be able to pick up the wood line, the gold mine, the town center. So it's got the bare necessities, but it looks like it might have some berries in there as well, Lidacore. I'm thinking this is going to be at least an eight. What do you reckon? Yeah, I, I'm actually going closer to the nine, to be honest, because mm -hmm. that is a beautiful lumber king, or there's a beautiful Arkham Chapman, rather. And the thing I love about this one is that even the second lumber camp would be within its range. So as you go deeper into that forest, your villagers will still mostly be empowered by the Aachen Chapel. So it's not just touching the edge of it. It's going to impact most of the villagers working on that forest for a long time. As you pointed out, gold mine is also a nice extra. Although on this map, you're mostly going to be having your gold income come from the Ragnitz Cathedral with the relics. Assuming that we're seeing the Ragnitz Cathedral, but if we are seeing that, your gold income is coming from there. But Beerus is also a nice little touch because you can place a mill there. And in the future, you want your farming eco to be around the Aachen Chapel anyways. If you have a mill that's already in the range of the Aachen Chapel, that's going to help you set up something like that. Why are we building a gate on an opening like that? Hello? <laughs> Why do we need a gate here, Beastie? <laughs> is, is there some sort of special operation that's happening that we're not aware of where Beastie's got... how? I mean, th there is the possibility that he could wall around the wall, but uh, maybe Beastie's living in a parallel universe where on his screen. He, he thinks he's walled off this crossing. Ooh, tower coming in here. Beautiful tower spot there for Marine Lord. Let's not forget, English love to play with their towers, and that is right on the spot, pushing Fishing Eco from Beastie. Council Hall now complete. And the question becomes, how is Beastie going to address all the aggression that's coming out of Marine Lord? Because Marine Lord is now dropping that tower. He's probably going to start pushing up some longbows as well. We could see some galleys hit the field very soon. Whereas for Beastie, I don't see any military production just yet. Looks like the outpost has got those two villagers chilling out in it for the moment. They're going to head back towards the base because he realizes that he's not able to break through the repair rate on that dock. And, uh, and those scouts are going to be jumping out and uh, and looking to provide a little bit of cover fire in that position as well. Marine Lord going to be pretty happy with, happy with his position, especially the middle being quite open as well. It means that he's going to be able to be funneling units through there. And we do begin to see our first longbow out on the map as well. Going to be looking to defend up this stone mine. And we've got ourselves the potential for arrow slits, but also the potential for a second town center. It looks like he falls back with two of those villages. I'm not sure whether it was because he got scouted out and the fact that his enemy saw that he had five villages on stone. So he was like, okay, you're doing a second town center. And then, then you know, Marine Lord reacts and says, ah, nah, I'll just use it for arrow slits. Don't worry. Looks like in the meantime, Beastie is thinking about straight castle age over here. And as you pointed out, he saw the stone miners. So he's like, okay, you are going for potentially multiple town centers over here. I can go to castle age. And you see, there are a couple of longbows coming through. But in the end, you should be able to get a stable up and get like one knight out to deal with those by the time they arrive. So these shouldn't be able to do that much damage to Beastie. And when Beastie gets up to castle age, he's going to be able to secure those relics for himself. Two are to the north and one to the south of his base. And honestly, if he gets some map presence for himself, remember that the Northern Crossing, I don't think it's walled by Marine Lord, indeed it isn't. If he builds a gate there and crosses the river with a prelate, he could even yoink some relic from the side of Marine Lord. Yeah, it's a really good point. Uh, obviously on this map, you do get three relics a side. So there's no f not five relics here, there are six relics. Uh, and so it does mean there are more relics to yoink. Uh, so that is definitely something that he's going to be looking to do. But now moving around with just a handful of longbows. Only three of these guys together with a scout going to be looking to pick up villagers. Looks like everybody makes it back towards the town center. The stable's already down and the knight going to be coming out. Able to clean this up. But it is going to cause quite a bit of idle time here. He's going to look to try and pick off some villagers if he can. You can see one of them managing to make it away with 14 health on it. And those longbows continue to round the corner looking to dish out damage. But that, uh, that stable going to be rallied towards this position. A marine lord going to castle as well well. King's Palace coming out for him. He is still mining a bit of a stone, so technically a third town center is not an impossible idea. And if you think about that, if you're expecting the HRE player to go for a fast Imperial with the Palace of Shrabia, you might need that third town center to make sure that you're not falling behind very fast in terms of villagers. You want to make sure that the villager gap is not massive and you're essentially matching the economy of the opponent. First Relic, as you pointed out, is now coming in here for Beastie. We do have a galley for him as well. Not something that Marine Lord has though, so... The only naval vessel, at least combat vessel on the river, belongs to Beastie right now. Keep in mind there is a wall up between these two players though. So even though he's got that uh, that vessel out, able to try and dish out damage, 
It's not going to be successful, at least not at the moment. Look at the damage that he's done on that King's Palace. It's down to 1,800 health. That's a fair bit of damage that he's taken off that. Uh, it's, it's not in, the, in the, uh, the most vulnerable position, so I don't suspect there's going to be too much of a raid happening on that, but it looks like the scout is going to be going down. He does garrison and eventually looks to take out that scout. Obviously, English Town Center's fire off double the arrows a normal Town Center does, so it means that he's able to take it out pretty effectively. And it looks like we're going to have a Knight's play from both of the players over here. Obviously, Marindord is looking to try and get some Prelates sniped down with those Knights. And the whole story for him is that he's got a good food eco. So why not just go for a very food heavy unit like the Knights? You do have high mobility as well as a high value unit. So you're seeing an increase in popularity with the English using Knights simply because their economy is so well streamlined towards the Knight production. And as you see, First two knights are crossing the river over here. Galley is going to get some volleys out there. And now Beastly going for a V-shaped vol over here, trying to prevent them from crossing. This might actually get spotted by Marine Lord. And this villager, oh no, this lady is actually showing the knights, the other villager that's building the walls. And she pays for it with her life. And with that, the second villager going to be going down and Beastie losing out multiple villagers this game on this crossing. This was something I was talking about a little bit earlier. The fact he could have walled this off earlier if he wanted to. He brought a villager out here. He put down a gate on this wall. It, I, I was curious as to why, you know, there, there was the potential he could go for some sort of sneaky wall like that. He doesn't go for it until it's too late, though. Yeah, and the thing is that if that villager just, you know, dies in the middle of nothing, then the other villager probably wouldn't have gotten spotted, obviously. It's easy to be smart from our position, but in the end, that voling is not gonna be complete. Relic's now being brought back over here by Beastie, and you see both of the players trying to put up some aggression towards the opponent's gold mine over here. Marine Lord diving in with his first two knights, gets a couple of villager kills, and on the other side, we also have some knights from Beastie lurking around the gold mine of Marine Lord. Looks like the Swabio is about to be dropped for Beastie. You can see that he's got 1,800 food in the bank at the moment and doing a nice little raid over towards his enemy side. These players definitely trading out villages at this point in time. 59 villages for Marine Lord, 36 for Beastie. So still a little bit to catch up for him at this point. But just remember, once that Swabia is down, it is going to be printing out villages nonstop. It'll be working overtime and it'll only be a matter of time until Beastie Cutie not only catches up to Marine Lord, but surpasses him. Looks like Beastie Sprout actually got killed together by Marine Lord Scout and a wolf out there on the northern side. So Beastie right now is sitting at only two relics. Obviously, that maxes out the Ragnitz Cathedral, so it's going to be the bare minimum that he needs, and he has checked that checkbox. But he wants to get as many as possible. He, in fact, started building a monastery, so he's expecting that third one to arrive at some point. And is there actually an opening? I don't think there's an opening over here. These guys, they're gonna get trapped over here. Beastie, I guess he's just distracting those four knights as long as possible. I was just going to say, this this seed looks very familiar. I played this seed before, I think. This is... Let's begin this little core. Let us dive in. I've got a black screen. Okay, there we go. We are good to go. We are looking happy, healthy. We've got these uh, the knights that were chasing away the knight of Beastie Cutie. He's done a good job in drawing the attention over towards this side of the map and, uh, and keeping things real. Yes, indeed. Um, I love how this one knight was able to divert the attention of those four knights, and this is slowing down Marine Lord's aggression. You see, Marine Lord has a grand total of five knights, four of which were chasing these two knights to the northern side, and this buys a ton of time for Beast to get these walls up. You see that this one scout is trying to prevent that, but it's a little too late. And it was much needed because, remember, this wall is still open, and Beastie was trying to build up that Paso Schwabia relatively far away from his starting TC. If those knights made it here, those villagers on the Pass of Shwabia would have been slaughtered. So the fact that Beastie was able to distract the Marine Lord here allowed him to safely get that Pass of Shwabia up. Knights have now made it through the river though, but you already have the barracks up for Beastie and you get the feel that he's getting closer and closer to that all-important HRE timing that we mentioned before. Yeah, with the Swabia now, he's going to be able to throw away villagers like he just don't care. That is right. The villagers come in cheap and they come in quickly. And no, I am not describing something else. That is the villagers I am talking about. But uh, we now see the economic upgrades coming through. Marine Lord looking to punish his opponent on the wood line. Once again, Crossbow is going to be moving together in tandem. The Lanskinex coming out in big swings. Watch out for those guys. They hurt hard. They hit hard over here. And we have seen an emergence of the use of the Lanskinex in this tournament before. So you got to respect those guys. We have seen how those guys can just wipe out a large group of horsemen in just a blink of an eye. So you got to be very careful with those. 
looks like the infantry is going to catch up to those crossbows, so they'll be left behind. But this is where that hawk is going to come into play. It's going to prevent the beastie from crossing the river, buying precious time for Marine Lord. But look at the villager count right now. 76 to 49. That villager lead that Marine Lord has is going to disappear in the next few minutes. Not only because Beastie is adding villagers himself from the Pass of Shrabia, also because once Beastie starts pumping out army, he's going to get some Springles going and the Springles will start killing Marine Lord's fish. Keep in mind that quite a lot of the workers that you see on the overlay for Marine Lord is in the form of fishing ships rather than villagers. That's a really good point. A lot of those villagers aren't really going to be there for too much longer. But now coming in once again over on this wood line, we can see the Lance Connects together working with those spearmen just trying to fend this position off. Behind this Marine Lord is being quite greedy, uh, adding in a third town center. That is correct. He's gone for a third town center, looking to keep up with the Kardashians. We'll check in with Beastie and see, is he still making villages from the main town center? That is what I want to know, because if he is, he's going to be on four town centers. But if he has stopped making them, then he's technically only on three. And indeed, that's a big decision point, because if you are consistently making villagers on your starting town center alongside the Pass of Schwabia, you can catch up in villager count much faster, but you're also depleting your food bank a lot sooner. Looks like he's not making any villagers on that new start or that starting town center, rather. Instead, he just uses it as a shelter to the villagers that get pushed away from the wood line by the knights. And right now, those army numbers are actually looking pretty decent for Marine Lord. You see, Longbow numbers increasing on the battlefield, knight numbers are increasing, and Beastie lacking the numbers to push out of his base right now. Yeah, this isn't looking good for him right now. He's having a tough time. And there's longbows that have been thrown in here as well, which are going to help out against those lance connects. The numbers just really not looking good for Beastie. He's having a tough time throwing together an army. He's got 12 military compared to the 32 of Marine Lord. And this could be a very tough position right now. This could be a very tough position. And here's the deal. HRE, if you let them use that boss of Shabby, if you let them grab those eco upgrades, it's going to be brutal. But this is not something that Marine Lord lets Beastie uh, have. Beastie simply doesn't have a single blacksmith upgrade on those units just yet. And look at that, the Hawk is also wiping out so many villagers. Beastie is struggling to access food, but more importantly, his army is not combat ready yet. Whereas for Marine Lord, he's got good upgrades. He's got the knights out there, he's got the archers, longbows, the crossbows. And more importantly, he's also grabbing the blacksmith upgrades in a very good offensive position. Would love to see a forward tower actually from Marine Lord here. Yeah, but now the Bombard has come out, and this is going to be able to help Beastie Cutie and save his position. It's going to enable him to give himself a little bit more space, grow that space out, because that Bombard is going to help snipe away any of these longbows, any of these uh, these knights. And the knights do run in, but obviously the spearmen, together with the men at arms, are going to work to take that down. He's going to be able to pull villagers if things do go sour for him. And now you can see that Bombard firing off and cleaning up the rest of that, that position. He is going to be A-OK, -okay, but take a look at that villager count. We have got almost a double villager count right now for Marine Lord. 101 villagers to 53 for Beastie Cutie. And there's a lot oh, owing no. to that. Oh, look at no, that. No, no, no. Are you, are you talking about the raid right there with the longbows? I'm assuming. Yeah, that's exactly it. Look at that. That's so many yeah. dead villagers out there. And yes, you're going to clean up the longbows, but the value is immense here for Marine Lord. He's using six or seven longbows to cripple the entire economy of Beastie Cutie. Look at the resource bank of Beastie. The only resource that he has an excess of is gold, simply because the Pass of Schwabia, or the Regnitz Cathedral rather, is generating him gold. He's struggling for food, he's struggling for wood. And behind this one, Marine Lord is buying himself so much time to capitalize on that 107 villagers he already has. Yeah, Marine Lord looking really strong in this game. Are we able to check and see how many fishing boats Marine Lord has got right now? Because I would suspect the number's probably about 15, 16, which means that we can wipe those numbers off the table because realistically, they're not going to be as effective uh, throughout the, the rest of this game. Um, so he's got 13 fishing boats at the moment. So you could probably call it about 97 villages for Marine Lord, which is definitely still pretty damn impressive. Especially if you consider the fact that the longbows are at it again, once again, hitting those gold miners, and the inefficiency of Beast's eco is now very concerning for him, because it's one thing that he still has 56 villagers and he has the pass of Schwabia, but most of those villagers are running for their lives as the knights make it to the other side of this wall, and Beastie, he simply can't catch a breath, he's sitting at three food in the bank, and behind this one, Marine Lord has all kinds of time to get to Imperial himself, now intercepting the villagers on that castle, Beastie can't catch a breath here. 
He's really struggling right now. Marine Lord is just giving him the old, good old-fashioned runaround. He's something that give you anxiety made famous and something the beast is going to be experiencing firsthand as undoubtedly he is feeling very anxious about his position in this game. He's down 2-1 in this series. It could potentially be 3-1 and that leaves Marine Lord in an advantageous position uh, and could potentially lose the, the series because of tilt and all that good stuff that comes in when you're down in a series like this. It looks like the Lancers decided to go for the Lumberjacks instead of the Villagers building the keep and this is actually helping Beastie immensely because now he's got that keep going so it's going to be much more difficult for Marine Lord to do further pressure but this is exactly what Marine Lord wanted. He doesn't want to fall behind in Imperial Age timing. All he wants to do is get to Imperial with the Wingard Palace and then start pumping out Imperial Age Army, get the enclosures on his farms. And look at that, 54 villagers to 122. Some of that, of course, is fishing ships for Marine Lord, but still, tremendous eco lead for an English player 20 minutes into a game against an HRE player that went to the pass of Schwabia. To me, it all just came down to that annoying little push that Marine Lord did with his knights as well as those crossbows. And then he added in a few longbows and he was just buying so much time, there was never a mass that was able to be built up for Beastie. And as a result, it just meant Marine Lord was able to stay in his base and just cause havoc, cause damage. And he's continued to do it throughout the game. But now we see Imperial reached. Wingard Army is making its way out onto the field. Upgrades coming through as well for Marine Lord. He is looking very, very good. He's looking really good, and the thing is that he set himself up long term. Now, Beastie is not out of this one just yet. We have seen the pass of, uh, or the power of the pass of Schwabia rather, numerous times before. Of course, he's got the Aachen Chapel as well, boosting his eco. But at the best for Beastie, now this is an even playing field, and this is not what he wanted. He wanted to have an advantage with that pass of Schwabia. He wanted to have a massive eco lead with that. He also has three relics as well to work with, so that cuts into that villager deficit a tiny bit. So this is not as bad for Beastie as it actually looks like if you consider the fact that Marine Lord does have uh, some fishing ships, which count as workers, but they are way less efficient as compared to what they used to be. Plus, Beastie has a pretty decent amount of passive gold income from the relics. It's not terrible for Beastie, but he needs a quite long time for recovery here, I feel. And Marine Lord, he set himself up long term, and that's the most important thing for him. So it is Marine Lord who is in the driver's seat right now, not Beastie. Beastie now moving out with some bombards, looking to finally clean up this mess that has been made by Marine Lord. We see that he's walled up the center as well as cleaned up that outpost down towards the south side that was just being very annoying and preventing that fishing economy from ever really growing too powerful or too strong. The Ark and Chapel looking healthy in the middle. We see down towards the south side, a Hulk has made its way, made its way through. Palisade Gate's going to be burned down. The uh, the relics on the backside for Beastie. He's only got three in the bag. He did manage to grab his hands on that fourth relic, but of course, a wolf took out that last prelate. <laughs> a very sad wolf. A very sad prelate. A very sad story. I love how Marine Lord, by the way, is placing his stables right next to the castle as if he was playing French. Unfortunately, he's playing English, so he's not going to get the discount out there. But you love the stylistic elements of his uh, base building. Anyways, Beast is back to 76 villagers, and this is why I said that this is far from over yet, because the pass of Schwabia allows you to have a crazy recovery, and that's exactly how this landmark was designed, essentially. The design wasn't that you should always just go fast to Imperial. The design was that you lose a bunch of villagers, and you can recover at a very swift rate. And that's exactly what you're seeing from Beastie over here. He's up to 78, plus the relics. This game is getting closer and closer, I feel. Spearman numbers looking pretty healthy for him. And keep in mind, Marine Lord has added a whole bunch of stables, as you mentioned, all around that, that keep, like, almost looking like a French player. And and uh, and I guess one of the things to note is with these large numbers of Spearman, he's going to have a, 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 an effective counter, but now the Horseman going to be able to run in. Villagers getting pulled to try and repair, but you can see he's completely blocked out, unable to actually take it. The bat Look at the Bombard, it's circling around in corners. It goes down. This is terrible right now for Beastie Cutie. Oh, the value lost over there is massive. He does have the Spearman, though, so he might be able to keep that keep alive over there, but a lot of resources lost. Huge force of horsemen coming through the crossing, though. But Beastie does have the perfect response to that, and right now the problem for Marine Lord is that he wasn't expecting a mass Spearman here, apparently. He was going for horsemen, and you see, he's just bumping into a huge amount of Spearman. Actually decides to take this engagement over here. You get the feel that this is really good here for Beastie, especially after sinking that hawk with the last bombard he has. Loses the bombard to the Springhold fire, though. 
Really nice play there for Marine Lord. I'm impressed with the way that he's able to hold here up against these full spearmen. I guess the one thing to note is we don't yet have that elite spearman upgrade coming through just yet for Beastie. Marine Lord going to be trying his best to hold on to his position. He's got hand cannoneers as well as horsemen coming in on the front line. And this is the consequence of having that English economy. You've got so much food, you might as well spend it on something. And horsemen are going to be the name of the game here as he looks to really try and capitalize on that economy, forcing away the spearmen with the horsemen. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, that's exactly it. You're just flooding horsemen because you have an infinite amount of food and you're just gathering so much. 2,500 food per minute and you gotta use it to something. Banking up resources doesn't really make a lot of sense in the long run. You want to win this game right now. You're playing to win, so you want to put all your resources that you banked up on the battlefield. Look at that. Second sacred site actually being captured over here by Marine Lord. Keep in mind, he was the only person with any kind of ships on the river, so he could deny it from Beast and now he captures it for himself. Now moving out with horsemen, some lancers join the party as well. And Trebuchet is making an appearance now that the Vingard army is getting fielded as well. Marine Lord is on 200 population right now. He's got plenty of resources in the bank. He's going to be stacking up those reinforcements. We also see a Reboldequin come out. That is correct. A Reboldequin has made its way onto the field. And you know what that means? That means trouble for any melee units. This guy absolutely... I'm not going to say it because this is a family-friendly cast, but you know exactly what I'm thinking. This thing doesn't mess around. It doesn't mess around, especially if it takes a Culverine ball right in the face. You just lost one of those to the Culverines. Looks like we do have another one still in there. And that guy, if you can get close, it unleashes Hugs like a big shotgun and it just evaporates infantry. We often laugh about that um, unit because it doesn't seem super powerful, but if you can get a volley out, no, it no, can no, wipe no. out the infantry like that. That was massive right there. It gets off a big barrage. I'm not sure how much damage it did, but it looks scary. I love the way that it just sits there staring into the distance like it's witnessed a thousand wars before it. And now Beastie Cutie falls back towards his castle, but there's so many horsemen here. He's got barely anything to deal with it. The elite spears are finally coming out and the village is going to be able to repair up that culver. Unfortunately, it looks like it's going to be able to survive an expensive unit here as the second culver joins the battle, beginning to focus down the siege of his opponent. He works his way to the front and they're going to have to fall back. The Springles make their way to war towards the enemy side of that battlefield and Beastie Cutie holds for another second, it seems. Beastie holds and that castle was lit a flame. Now there is emergency repairs available though for Beastie. He unleashes the first volley with the Culverins, takes down one of the trebuchets, loses one of the Culverins in the process though, but he keeps the castle alive and that's what he needs. He needs to make sure he doesn't lose that, but he can't afford to lose those precious Culverins. Second volley comes out from Marine Lord, takes down another Culverin. Really, really unfortunate positioning there for Beastie Cutie. Just letting that Culverin come forward. He, he tried to get some nice snipes in, but obviously Siege Works uh, not being in means that he doesn't have that extra health. In addition to that, we've also got Greased Axles up for Marine Lord, which means he's got those extra quick Culverin, or rather Springles. But now the Reboldequin coming out onto the front line, it looks like they're going to be able to focus it down. Marine Lord going to be struggling there as one of the Reboldequins unfortunately loses its life. He's got a handful of Springles that are still here. Also got the Trebuchets on the backside that are just slowly but steadily working on that keep. Oh my lord, isn't it beautiful? Look at that farming economy for Marine Lord. It tells you a lot about the English farming economy and its power that we are seeing 2,700 food per minute for Marine Lord as compared to 1,600 for Beastie, who does have the power of the Aachen Chapel. That is brutal. That is an insane amount of food. And Marine Lord, this is the reason why he's going hand cannoneers and horsemen. He needs to convert it to some food heavy units, and that's exactly what he's doing. Taking a good engagement over here against the hand cannoneers, but the Culverin is able to retaliate against the Springles. Beastie Cutie with just not, not a lot of production in queue right now. Six Spearmen, two Lance Connects. He's got more than enough resources right now if he wanted to. He could have 15 uh, Spearmen out here easily on this field. He could have 30 Spearmen out here on this field if he had the production for it. And now he's going to continue funneling out villagers onto this front side, looking to repair up any potential culverin that are out here. We've got plenty of hand cannoneers that are coming out as well for Marine Lord. Uh, so that's going to be difficult for him to hold on, but those villagers are going to be able to easily repair up that culverin. And things are starting to look a little bit better for Beastie. He's keeping his head above water. He's managed to even up the village account. He's on 129. Now it's about surviving. He's, he's, he's managed to survive up until here. The question is whether he can survive another 30 minutes to put himself in a decent spot. 
Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, Marine Lord's pressure is amping up over here. You see a castle. Now the first foothold of Marine Lord on Beastie's side of the river. Coburn actually pushing pretty deep over here, trying to find some kills on those trebuchets because you know that you need to snipe those trebuchets. Beastie can't afford to lose those production buildings on the front line. He needs to snipe some of those trebuchets. Looks like a castle is going up over here. Beastie is going to be forced to migrate. And as he said, it is a concerning sight to see that Beastie's numbers aren't looking great. He was able to decap the Sacred Site to the south, notably, which was like at 6 minutes or so Sacred Site countdown, so at least that checkbox is now checked for Beastie. But still, this is gonna be an incredibly difficult hold for Beast to make. He falls back from that position. A lot of horsemen gonna be coming out here. A huge amount of hand cannoneers as well. He runs underneath to keep the boiling oil, gets spread out, and now those spearmen gonna be able to clean up those horsemen very effectively. Fortunately, everything looks good for him at the moment. Th at the same time, he's continuing to fire off on those hand cannoneers with the culverin. These guys actually dish out a fair bit of damage. You gotta be careful when you're dealing with mass culverin. Surprisingly, they're quite effective against infantry, especially these high health infantry units like the hand cannoneers. Yeah, that's exactly. They do have a great base damage and it helps you just turn them into a good general purpose unit. Plus, of course, you can snipe enemy anti-siege weapons with that. And you see Beastie, he's turning himself into an AoE 3 player with the amount of cannons that he's fielding on the battlefield. Now he's got four Coverings out there and we're getting closer and closer to that full siege composition that Beastie loves to use. He's gonna have four Coverings out now adding bombards as well against that keep. Did you see the production right there for Marine Lord? He's got 38 production buildings all rallied to the front right now. That is a lot of production. Let's take a look and see Beastie's production because he's losing his barracks on the front side. He's lost three already. The fourth one probably going to be going down shortly. Those bombards going to be, or those trebuchets rather, going to be sitting underneath that, that very safe keep. But we've got 16 production buildings out for Beastie. It looks like six stables, seven barracks and two siege workshops. I mean, for Beast, it's realistically two production buildings. We all know that the only production building that he <laughs> loves to use is the Siege Workshop, right? That is exactly it. That is exactly it. But uh, Beastie's starting to look decent. I mean, he's made his way up to 200 population, right? Like, and, and this is the thing. Marine Lord bought himself so much time with those early attacks. He had a great big lead. But if you were to ask me who's in a better position right now, you probably have to hand it over to to uh, to Beastie. Marine Lord, sure, he's got a decent mass, but Beastie's on 200 pop. He's made his way up to 140 vils. He's looking good. Yeah, and the thing is that you're entering Beastie territory over here. You don't want to have games that last longer than 40 minutes against Beastie. And now you see Marine Lord is diving in here, trying to snipe the Culverins. Culverins being pulled back over here, though. Boiling oil, dishing out punishment. Hand cannoneers will take down one of those, but not a horseman coming from the south. Beautiful surround by Beastie. Beautiful flank down towards that south side, isn't it? Oh my lord, the horsemen just dishing out plenty of damage, getting that ranged bonus damage that they get against ranged units. But now able to clean that up, the men at arms baited away completely. And now the culverin potentially going to be taking out those trebuchets and the bombards looking to clean up the, the, the forward keeper. You can see them focusing it down. He's got three bombards out. He's got four culverin. He's got a handful of lance connect in here as well. Actually, no, there's no lance connect. Those are, those are just horsemen. Uh, they, they look like lance connect with horses. Oh, new push coming in here from Marine Lord, though the castle is set on fire, he's repairing it, but there is still four Culverins on the battlefield, and as you pointed out, they are dishing out a ton of punishment over here. Once again, an infantry push coming in here to try and snipe the Culverins. Boiling oil helping out a lot, and the Bombard is gonna be the main target over here. Marine Lord trying to save that keep over there. Beastie simultaneously triggering the emergency repairs on his own keep to keep it alive as long as possible. Still, Marine Lord's level of pressure over here is crazy, and Beastie, he's in for a long, long defense over here, because Marine Lord is not running out of juice anytime soon. Yeah, this is exactly it. The Culverin continue to move forward. He's got a nice little bit of a wall here just to give himself a bit of room to move. But the Culverin going to have to fall back. He's baited them almost a little bit too far forward. Lance Connect going to be coming out and dishing out plenty of damage. The Hand Cannon is taking out the first Culverin. Three more remain. You can see them making their way through. They're trying to be able to hit that backside. But fortunately, the Culverin once again scoot and shoot their way out of there. Hand Cannon is continuing to move forward. We don't see any Mangonels out for Beastie at this point in time. You can't help but think just a single Mangonel on the backside would really help him out right now. Yeah, a single mangonel would help so, so much over here. There's not a single springboard on the battlefield right now for Marine Lord. And even if there was, supported by the Culverins, you could still make it work. The castle goes down over here for Beastie, which leaves the entire front of his base wide open right now. 73 army versus only 31 from Beastie. And the Culverins are nice, but if you don't have a front line, it simply won't survive. Another keep being attempted over here as Marine Lord is pushing up. This keep might not even go up over here if Marine Lord opens fire in time. 
Yeah, this is looking bad for Beastie. Just the power of the Wingard is coming in right now. This is a landmark that I happily crowned the best landmark in the game for the late game. And this is the reason why. Non-stop trebuchets coming out from Marine Lord and he pays just a very small price for them. It is an incredible landmark and it enables him to just have constant levels of siege throughout this late game. And it means he's able to clean up all of the buildings that get placed down. He's worked his way towards the back of the enemy base. The hand cannoneers together with the men at arms continue crunching through looks like the culverin on the south side here trying to position themselves in a in a way to try and take out those trebuchets but they're just having a tough time getting through and as you pointed out the amount of resources that you save on the vingard army is insane to put this into context the entire army that you're getting in the vingard army costs 1300 resources you pay 400 resources total for the Wingard army. You save 900 resources per batch of units on the Wingard Palace. Insanely valuable, especially on the cost of the trebuchets. You can continuously pop out siege onto the battlefield and you will always have enough firepower to deal with buildings. This is one of the biggest powers of the English late game, the ability to constantly push your buildings because they never run out of anti-building siege. Beastie now down to 150 population. Not a lot of resources in the bank at this point. Less than uh, less than 200 uh, wood. Oh, sorry, less than 200 gold. Less than 300 food. He is struggling to keep himself above water right now. He is trying his best to take out those trebuchets. It's three of them that remain over on the front side. A fourth one going to be reinforcing. He loses the culverin though. This isn't looking good for him right now. Max out. Marine Lord continues pushing through the base. There's a whole bunch of landmarks here, and we've got ourselves a bit of a keep going down on the opposite side of the map. Beastie is looking for gold and he's found it except it's marine lords and marine lord doesn't want him to have it so now turns his attention towards that side down to 140 population beastie is indeed struggling right now this is not looking oh, good for him man. not at all especially if this keep gets denied over here so many villagers going down and sure thing you can replenish villagers using the pass of schwabia but not if you run out of food and not on the other side of the map now the man arms are pushing in here keep gets cancelled by beastie He's floating 2,000 stone. He can afford to build keeps. The problem is that he can't keep them alive as Marine Lord is pushing deeper and deeper into his base. And that deadly combination of men-at-arms, hand canoes, and trebuchets is just never ending. We're up to 55 men-at-arms for Marine Lord. That flood is just non-stop. 3,500 food per minute for Marine Lord is fueling that flood of units for our red player here. He's got so many units out. He's got 53 men at arms on the field at the moment. It is a huge amount of men at arms that he's got in his back pocket. And look at this. You know, sure, the keep went up on your enemy side, but guess what? There's one villager that's left over there. Beastie marched 15 villagers for that gold mine, and now there's only a single villager that remains to mine gold. He is not a happy camper. That is definitely not the case. But this is a struggle that he is on, and he's going to continue working his way towards a victory of some sort, but he's down to 109 population. Marine Lord on the other side, maxed out still. And Marine Lord is not running out of juice at all. You see, he's also stripping the map Baron of Wood. He has banged up 7,000 wood. So even if this push somehow stalls out, he has so many backup resources to work with. You see, he's constantly assaulting this keep over here. And even the boiling oil is not enough deterrent now. Marine Lord's superiority is so big here, numbers-wise, that he can afford to run underneath the castle, take the damage from the boiling oil, but still take a good engagement because he's killing villagers underneath, making sure that there is no more repairs coming in. And when emergency repairs are gone, that castle will fall. Beastie knows that. And Marine Lord is going to take game number four. Very convincing play with the English on Mongolian Heights, moving to three to one. Impressive stuff right there from Marine Lord. That was insane. I am, I'm, I'm so, I don't even know where to start. You know, I know where to start. Actually, I take it back. That wall in the middle, that is what set the pace for this game. It all goes back to that wall. Remember back when he put up that silly little wall and made a, a bit of a, a longbow tunnel? That is what changed everything because it meant those longbows got through. And sure, those longbows got cleaned up. But guess what? There were knights that followed them up. And then there were crossbows that followed them up. And it was so much pressure that was applied to a player who just wanted to go Imperial. Just, just leave me alone, man. I just want to go fast Imperial. He wasn't able to do it. Marine Lord punishes it massively. Very well played.